So most likely I will go in the morning to the greenhouse, check that all the systems are running and that the plants are healthy. Human spaceflight is definitely a challenge. You need plants that grow fast, that need little heat, little light, and that where you don't throw anything away. We are bringing together all the different controlled environment agriculture technologies into one 40-foot container. It's all about uh, the taste. We're talking about human lives that need food, they need fiber, they need nutrients to live. Wherever we go, we're, we're going to need to produce food to feed people. It will be very difficult, particularly in long duration, in very distant travel to other planets, to continuously bring food and supplies. The more that can be produced on site, using local resources, the better for the situation. Eden ISS was conceived to test advanced cultivation technologies for the safe production of food in space. The implementation of Eden ISS, which is part of a closed-loop life support system for long-duration space missions, is the long-term goal of the project. Within our project, we are trying to validate key technologies for future habitats on Moon and Mars, especially in greenhouse systems that will be integrated in those habitats. We want to examine technologies like air management system, nutrient delivery system, but also light systems and plant health monitoring systems. Under the leadership of DLR, the German Aerospace Center, Eden ISS brings together research partners from all over the world in a total of eight countries. Austria, Canada, Germany, Ireland, Italy, the Netherlands, Sweden, and the US. Eden ISS comprises an interdisciplinary team of space engineers, architects, psychologists, light specialists, and scientists from the areas of horticulture, food safety and quality, microbiology, and environmental research. So the Eden ISS greenhouse is really composed of two containers put together. One is a future exploration greenhouse, which is where we're growing plants, the greenhouse aspect. The other container, the other system, is the service section, and that really contains the various technologies that support plant growth. The service section houses the International Standard Payload Rack, ISPR. The ISPR demonstrates safe food production in a confined environment, under microgravity conditions such as those on the International Space Station, ISS. For us, the ISS is the first step toward exploration. So we want to go on the space station in order to validate key uh, technical and procedural elements in order to be prepared for the next exploration of surface of Mars, of asteroids or of the Moon. We do provide a microbiological control of the environment that is going to uh, support safe food production on orbit. With the Eden project, we have the possibility to modulate uh, the growing environment of the plant in order to have the best quality in nutritional terms for the astronauts and for the crew that we eat those produce. An important component is the atmosphere management system. So the atmospheric management system allows us to control not just the temperature, uh, humidity and the CO2, the carbon dioxide which plants need to grow, but it can also help us remove some of the gases that might accumulate in, in this box. The nutrient delivery system ensures that the plant roots in the trays get nutrients and water. So there's misting sprayers, uh, there's a whole range of pumps using dynamic systems, pumps to move the water into the root zone and take it away and recycle it. And that's the other thing. Everything is recycled because, of course, in space there's no such thing as waste. The nutrient solution consists of carefully selected ingredients. It's nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus and 11 other mineral elements. The difficulty is plants don't eat the same 
uh, diet. They don't, they don't feed the same diet of these nutrients uh, all the time. When they're young plants, they have a, a diet that's high in nitrate, but as they get older and start to go into reproductive stages, their diet changes. We want to optimize how much green, how much biomass we can get from this greenhouse. And these other systems control the environment, so we're using controlled environment agriculture to provide the optimum temperature, humidity, CO2 and light to get as much green stuff out of this box. A special process of growing plants was used. It's called aeroponics. Aeroponics is a technique, a soilless technique, where the roots are hanging in the air and are sprayed every 10 minutes by a nutrient solution. Light is one of the most important environmental factors for plants. It's their source of energy. Because the plants are immobile and they cannot move around, they get all the information about their surrounding from the light. So we can use this to manipulate, so they answer to the light quality, changing their growth pattern, changing their morphology, how they look, and changing their chemical composition and um, also flowering pattern. So we can use it to tell them actually how we want them grow. The lighting system consists of intelligent LED lights designed for closed environments. They're very durable and can withstand harsh conditions and high humidity. The plant health monitoring system makes it possible to distinguish between unhealthy and safe to eat vegetables. The food is safe to eat. It's grown in a very controlled environment where we eliminate a lot of um, elements such as microbes that would normally be found in plants grown outdoors or in soil. We're also able to control the nutrients that it gets so we know as it's growing exactly what nutrients are there and so we're able to minimize the bad molecules within the plants. So we're able to say definitely yes, it's safe to grow and safe to eat. It's absolutely necessary to do this biomonitoring when you are really planning to do a confined mission like one in a spacecraft. You have to know which microbes are there, if there are pathogens for humans or in this case for plants and if they can cause some problems. We have to be uh, prepared to identify problems if they occur and to think about measures to avoid them. So we check for the presence of uh, compounds uh, that we want to avoid by analyzing the plant tissues and we also check for the presence of pathogens, of potential pathogens for humans in the vegetables. More than 20 different crop species were selected for the greenhouse experiment. Three tall growing plants like tomatoes, peppers and cucumbers, 10 different types of lettuce, radishes, kohlrabi, Swiss chard, a variety of herbs such as basil, chives, parsley, mint, coriander, and others. And for the leaves, then we have selected also a variety. This, for instance, has been selected because it's very spicy. It's mustard leaf, and it is very spicy. And then we have different colors. How? the variety and the freshness and have an influence of the psychology. So it's not only a question of resource use efficiency. The Eden ISS team studied how the variety of vegetables influenced human psychology in terms of taste and texture. I think this will be the first time that a crew has been trained on how to determine exactly how a crop should taste. Because when we look at flavor, flavor is linked back to the antioxidants, for example. If it doesn't taste right, that's also an indication that the nutrition is not right. So this is a huge innovation in that, in that the crew themselves become the testers and are able to give us the feedback that we can match to all of the analytical data that we will do when we get the dried plants back. Eden ISS was tested 400 meters from the German Neumeyer Station 3 in Antarctica for one full year. The vegetables grown in the greenhouse supplemented the overwintering crew's diet. 
testing the greenhouse under remote conditions is an important step for developing biological life support systems for space missions. Neumeyer Station is a research platform in Antarctica, the German research platform, and uh, running year-round with nine people. Situated near the coastal line of Antarctica, but on the moving shelf ice, that is something special. I think uh, there is a relationship between the uh, isolation, this harsh environment, compared to space. I think that's uh, the first idea why it goes to Antarctica, to simulate a little bit these nearly same uh, conditions. Project team member Paul Zabel of the DLR joined the Neumeyer station crew for one year to cultivate plants, maintain all subsystems and conduct research in the greenhouse. Other plants like some lettuce that we grow, uh, I will most likely harvest every two days. So I will cut away some of the leaves that we then can consume for our dinner. Then there are other plants like radish which don't need much caring, they, they just grow by themselves and I only have to check that they are doing well. Most of caring for the plants is done by the systems. All essential stages of plant growth, the functionality and the effectiveness of the subsystems were monitored by the Eden ISS operator on site in Antarctica and at the DLR Mission Control Center in Bremen. We will also watch uh, the plants grow from here, from Germany and all over the world. That's why we are here in the mission control room, where we can observe the plants over 34 cameras that are observing each step of the growth. Between February and November 2018, Eden ISS produced 270 kilograms of fresh vegetables with only 12.5 square meters of growing area. That amounts to around 5 kilograms of fresh produce per week. And Eden ISS is really laying the groundwork for how we're going to be able to have these reliable biological life support systems in the future. All in all, one can say that especially the Eden ISS greenhouse is a unique project to try to pave our way to future exploration of Moon and Mars, deep space, and also to return the effects of technology development for these uh, specific closed environment to Earth and for terrestrial applications. The Eden ISS facility in Antarctica has been renewed for two further research winters and will produce more fresh vegetables for the overwintering crews at the Neumeyer station. In this way, more scientific data can successfully flow into the world's research community in the coming years.